Huh. Neat. Welcome to Vibe Check, a series where I break down how and why your favorite game resonated with you on an emotional level. Today we're going to take a look at Old School RuneScape, a game I got sucked into recently. It's been all I can think about for the past couple months, and I think I know why. But before that, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Old School RuneScape is an MMO. It has all the trappings of a traditional MMO. Quests, PvP, raids, all that you'd expect. But where RuneScape feels unique to me is the skills. There are 23 skills in the game. Eight of those are dedicated to combat, like most MMOs. The remaining 15 don't involve combat in any way. I've always been fascinated with games that feature non-combat skills. Sure, it's fun to go through a long quest line and kill a powerful boss, but it's also fun to zone out and chop down some trees, farm some crops, build a house. These are all skills you can level up alongside your attack or ranged skills. Variety is the spice of life in RuneScape. It's not a game about any one aspect, it's about all of them together that make it special. Some people will have their goal be to max out any one skill to level 99, get 99 fire making, 99 runecraft, whatever. But that's not enough for a lot of players. They don't want RuneScape to be a game where they only make fires. They want to use all the other skills. They want to get them all to 99. And that's no small feat. YouTuber Chaos estimated that the fastest you could get a max cape, which involves getting all 23 skills to 99, would take you at minimum 1,600 hours. And that's playing at max efficiency, which no human does. People talk about maxing their accounts in terms of years. This isn't a game you can beat in a month. It's something you chip away at month after month, year after year. That's the game Jagex has built. They don't want this to be a game full of short-term dopamine hits. They want the anticipation to build. You expect to see an item drop every single time a monster dies. You kill Cyclops after Cyclops just waiting for that little Dragon Defender to drop. And once you start to forget about it, once you start to zone out, boom, there it is. It took me like three to four hours to grind out this one item, and once I got it, I was so satisfied. You know what they call that? Delayed gratification. To get the Dragon Defender, you have to receive all these drops in order before this thing even has a chance to drop. Each item here has a 1 in 50 chance of dropping from a Cyclops, and the Dragon Defender itself has a 1 in 100 chance. If these had a drop rate of 1 in 10 and this of 1 in 20, Getting that drop at the end wouldn't be as satisfying. The fact that Jagex so often gives items very low drop chances increases the highs that the drop itself gives. Yippee! With the 1 in 50 and 1 in 100 drop rate for the defenders, to get them all, you need to kill roughly 450 Cyclops. I had to kill 487. Not too bad, could have been a lot worse. Let me tell ya. Killing 487 Cyclops is nothing in the world of RuneScape. The Phoenix is a pet you can get from the Winter Tot. It's a minigame dedicated to training the fire-making skill, and when you complete it, you get a reward crate. Generally, you get two to three reward rolls per crate opening. Each time the crate rolls for a reward, you have a chance to get the pet. What is this chance, you might ask? One in 5,000. If RNG wasn't in the cards, you'd have to play this minigame 5,000 times to get the pet. But of course, RNG is in the cards. Just like how I went over the estimated rate on Cyclops for my Dragon Defender, Reddit user Lekeb went over the rate for the Phoenix pet. Remember how it has a drop chance of 1 in 5,000? He played this minigame over 8,000 times and still didn't get the pet. I got it on my 18th try. I feel dirty admitting that. Like what did I do to deserve this 1 in 5,000 pet drop chance on my 18th try, where this guy does 8,000 tries and still doesn't get it? It doesn't feel fair. RNG doesn't care about fair though. It doesn't care that he got 200 million fire making XP. 
it cares about whether it rolls that 5,000 sided die on the right number or not. We both had the same chance every time we opened a reward crate. Once I got that drop, this game had its meaty claws in me. I felt that fat dopamine hit of getting a 1 in 5,000 drop, and I'm going to be chasing that high for a while. A lot of people here are doing that too. There's a sense of community in activities like this. You do the same minigame for an hour with the same people. Maybe you don't talk, or maybe you keep the chat hidden completely. Either way, you feel a connection to these people. You're all hanging out in the winter top with your own little goals. Everyone hoping that the reward crate after this game gives them the pet. That community experience extends to outside of the game. Another Reddit user named Hey Tom's My Name would post daily updates on his grind for the agility pet, which has roughly a 1 in 9,900 base chance to drop. It technically goes down a bit the higher level you are, but not by much. He was doing 100 laps every day at the Penguin Agility course, and he even included a little penguin fact in his posts. Every day, people leave comments saying how tomorrow's gonna be it for sure. The next day comes, and nothing happens. 208 days this goes on. On day 209, he gets it. People pop off in the comments. Turns out, this guy was right. Tomorrow was it. Some guy said that if he got the pet the next day, he'd have his fiance pour hot coffee on his... Ooh, poor guy. And he actually followed through with it. They deleted their account, though. I love the sense of community that built up around this. People were here with this guy every day for his pet grind. They'd come in daily to tell him tomorrow was the day for sure. That sense of delayed gratification is so powerful. Just seeing someone else go through it and eventually get the reward is satisfying enough for a lot of people. That's why there's so many YouTube series of people doing weird challenge runs in RuneScape. Whether that's playing in the official challenge mode called Iron Man, where you have a whole host of restrictions, or it could be self-imposed, like locking yourself to a certain region, or even playing the game one tile at a time. People love the struggle. Whether they're playing through it themselves, or watching someone else do it, that's what RuneScape is about. Well, to most people it is. To some, though, they don't want to have to do all that grinding themselves. Either they've done it before and don't want to do it again, or they just don't want to do it in the first place. Players will find ways to not have to do things they don't want to, even if it involves breaking the rules. Botting is a massive problem in the game, anyone will tell you that. A quick glance at any popular location will reveal a horde of bots. Whatever the bot owner's goal is, it almost always comes back to someone not wanting to play the game. They could be making in-game gold to sell to other players who want to pay real-life cash for it. They could be gearing up bots to sell to PvPers who don't want to build it up themselves. There's probably like 50 other reasons I can't even think of. Account services, that's another big one. Almost every time I'm in the Grand Exchange, I see people advertising that they'll beat the Inferno for you. The Inferno is a late game challenge that really puts your combat skills to the test. From what I understand, most players could probably do it with enough practice. But some people? They don't want to do that practice but they really want the reward. So what do they do? They pay someone cash and give them their login details to do the challenge for them. I really don't know what to make of that. If I ever reach a point where it comes time for me to try the Inferno, but I find out my skills aren't up to par, one of two things will happen. I either practice to get better, or give up and go for another challenge. I don't think I would ever genuinely consider the option of paying someone to do the challenge for me on my account. Like I talked about with delayed gratification earlier, part of the enjoyment of getting a reward is the build-up to it. If I pay some guy a stack of cash to do it for me, I don't get any enjoyment out of that. I don't know, this whole side of the game is weird to me and I don't quite understand why someone would engage with it. It's like those mobile game boosts where you can pay money to not have to play the game. Though, I can't say I don't completely sympathize with them. There are some grinds in this game that aren't fun. Construction is what I'm looking forward to the least. There's only two methods to train that skill meaningfully. Either you run around the world building furniture for residents in a little minigame, 
where you sit in your house, alone, clicking over and over in such a specific pattern to maximize your XP gains. XP in this game is generally balanced so that more intensive activities reward higher XP per hour, and less intensive activities give lower XP per hour. As you can imagine, that means running around building furniture for people gives less XP than sitting in my house building and tearing down the same piece of furniture hundreds of times over. Someday, if I commit to progressing this account towards the mid and late game, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and choose one of those methods. Would I prefer the slower, less mind-numbing method? Or would I choose to rot away my fingers for construction XP? It's a tough decision, and neither feels great. In fact, they feel kinda lonely. We're training fire making in the winter tot, and training runecraft in Guardians of the Rift feel like a community experience, a shared struggle. This feels like I'm out there on my own. Another skill, Slayer, is one I have more complex feelings on. Slayer is a skill that revolves around you killing specific monsters. You go to a Slayer Master and they tell you to kill some amount of some creature. And they can assign you a lot of monsters to kill, sometimes in the upper hundreds. I was recently assigned like 140 blue dragons. So I basically just gotta sit in this area and kill 140 blue dragons. And these guys are no slouch. I gotta keep an eye on my health, my food, my potions, my prayer, all that. Some tasks are easier, but for most of them, you have to be present and attentive. I love that they turned the whole MMO trope of go kill 10 boars into a whole skill. In a way, Slayer is a microcosm of RuneScape's design philosophy. Go spend like 5 hours killing this one monster over and over, and you'll get some points at the end to spend on rewards. It's so satisfying to hang out in a cave for a long time. I feel like an adventurer doing my duty of culling the number of blue dragons in the world. I like it on a thematic level. But man, does that have longevity? It takes so long to complete some of these tasks, and I have a feeling they're just going to get longer the deeper I get into the skill. Some of the grinds in this game make me wonder if the gratification is too delayed sometimes. All that being said, RuneScape is still an enjoyable experience as a whole. I like the idea of spending a couple hours killing one boss in hope of a rare drop. I like getting a slayer task where I have to kill 140 blue dragons. I like logging in every day to harvest my crops. Playing on this account feels like I'm slowly working on a project, and every day I log on to chip away at it a bit more. Everyone in this game is doing that. Everyone's on their own little journey, and it's so cool to just hang out in the same space as them. Check out this video. YouTube seems to think you'll like it for some reason. Hit me up on Patreon for bi-weekly videos where I ramble about… things. I did one on RuneScape a month or two ago, go peep that one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.